I will be as brief. We all agree the importance of good governance for economic prosperity. Um, technology. <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> Um, I've been traveling in Asia recently and looking at what's happening there, and nearly all the, the Asian countries are doing well. There is a notable exception, North Korea. <laughs> The governance makes a difference. Um, <laughs> but Asia is an interesting area. Um, five Asian economies, yes, yeah, economies, because some of these are not countries, Hong Kong and Taiwan, according to some people's definitions. Um, have joined the set of the most advanced industrial economies after experiencing growth miracles. You can see the path, that rapid growth. This is, I always look at per capita, or maybe it's per adult, to correct for that. As you can see, there was a starting down at 30% of the US. It's now up to nearly 80 per 75 percent. A couple of those countries like Singapore and uh, Hong Kong are a bit ahead of the US. But there's a lot of people in Japan who tends to dominate this. Some countries are experienced growth miracles. The last talk was sort of fascinating about China. Uh, here, ID trend. There's secular growth due to the growth of the stock of useful knowledge that is common across countries. So if you just grow a trend, that's with the growth model, which I use, um, and you detrend it, it becomes a level line. Level is healthy growth, doubling every 39 years. As you can see, <laughs> This is detrended. Uh, China's, over the last 35 years, has been experiencing a growth miracle. There's some winners in these games, and there's some losers. The US and the EU, over, and I've been focusing on the last 10 years, and EU have been losing ground relative to trend. I say they need to reverse their bad policy regime shift. And maybe do a move to, well, I'll be arguing good things could happen. There could be with relatively modest reforms. How is Spain doing? Poorly, as the next picture will show. I emphasize detrended GDP. Flat line is healthy growth. When do you see, by the way, the trend growth is about 1.85% a year, doubling every 39 years. There are periods of more rapid growth. That's when you're moving to higher balanced growth paths. Um, or sometimes as you move to a lower balanced growth path. During the transition, associated with the change in the policy regime. Fast growth, <laughs> slow growth in recession, even recessions. Here's Spain's picture. Things seem to be going reasonably well during a number of uh, years. And then beginning in the uh, two th end of 2007, it lost significant ground relative to trend. This 
Some people have a misconception about the Asian industrial countries. They're doing fine. The um, big differences in levels are always all do just about. The differences in, um, or the due to the differences in policies. The common, the, the thing that leads to this big differences in incomes across countries at a point in time. Japan lost their decade of growth in the 92 to 2002, but then they got back onto trend. They had a recession, they recovered, and are right virtually back up to trend. With new webonomics, I'm not optimistic. Uh, there's some good things in those plans and some bad things. Um, as you can see, Japan lost when the US, North America, and Europe would Western Europe were doing well. Um, there was a regime change associated with Koizumi. You reformed the banking and did some other things. And they even recovered a little bit of the lost ground. I, I like this, this picture just jumped at me and I couldn't resist showing it. Uh, the reform did well uh, they, under Kusami, not because they spent a lot of money on uh, government purchases of goods and services. It was going up. It leveled off during that good period and then started growing again. Well, Spain and the US were in the same club. The US is doing lousy. No recovery yet. Well, I define things relative to trend. And you read in the paper other things. Uh, but they don't understand growth. They're using the old uh, MBR definition of Wesley Mitchell, who tried to block Simon Kuznets from doing work on growth theory, which is the workhorse of uh, modern macro. The following figure shows this going along, roughly trend, and <laughs> there was that recession, and since then it's been not going along that well. Actually, it seems to be even falling further below trend. Actually, now when macroeconomics or aggregate economics is a hard science, there's theory, there's deviations from theory. We can make quantitative statements. This theory's been tested through successful use. Um, and this was a fairly major study. We have lots of general, every birth year cohorts. Uh, so it meant that there's a lot of different groups. And needs to say, we did a dynamic uh, general equilibrium. But the key thing, it's consistent with the national income product and capital accounts, as well as the balance sheet facts. People, everything has to match. You can't have one set of parameters to explain phenomena A and another set for phenomena B. You have to stay with your set. Um, true, when you have an actual model, you abstract from different things depending upon the question being addressed. And you always check re robustness. You know, you pick your model economy to display the key facts. And when you have a different structure, you have to go through that step again. Um, and a lot of variants of the structure was used and answers did not change. So what does this proposed policy regime change? Have mandatory savings for retirement. Some countries do, Australia. Uh, it's, uh, Sweden, um, for example. Now I say eliminate K-1 
capital income tax. Broaden the taxpayers and lower the marginal tax rate. We phase in reforms so all birth year cohorts are made better, better off. There's no, the old people don't lose on this shift. We left all the welfare programs the same. We did not, um, and when regard to local public goods and services, we treated them as a lump sum transfer, local one. That's about 13% of output. By the way, there's a really simple way to eliminate U.S. capital income tax. Just make savings not part of taxable income. Anything you withdraw from your past savings is part of taxable income. With these changes, the U.S. income tax becomes a consumption tax. Um, we've moved a long way in that direction already with these deferred compensation 401ks and retirement plans. The academics were the leaders in that with their TIA crafts. Um, we moved far in that direction. Many people are not on margin. They can put more deferred savings or less. What will happen with this policy regime switch? Here's a picture. We normalize to 100 at the beginning. No change in policy. Regime, you just stay at trend, doubling every 39 years. What happened is this black line, and if they continue with that, uh, this is what will happen. The red line is with the reform. As you can see, in the public finance field, this is, these numbers are astronomical uh, relative. Uh, they're always happy when they get a half a percent. We're getting. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Uh, we're, we're not getting a one or half a percent. We're getting 23 percent welfare gains for our grandchildren and four or five for people who are near retirement. Um, in terms of output, it uh, leads to an increase relative of the trend level by 33%. This is output, not welfare. When I say welfare, I'm doing consumption equivalents. Um, it turns out that with these reforms, people allocate more time to the market activities and less to non-market. What is the final thing I have to say? Economic problems are political. <laughs> As you heard in the uh, China example. Well, my conclusion, it's time for the Spanish and American people to agree to a good policy regime change, incident, and stick with it, and enjoy the be benefits. Thank you.